Hi, I'm John Hood. I'm the author of the new novel, Mountain Folk. This is the ninth in a series of videos that we've prepared to give you an advanced look at some of the themes, characters, settings, and magical creatures that populate the world of Mountain Folk. The genre of my book is called historical fantasy. I combine real life events and characters with bits of magic, myth, and folklore to tell the story of America's founding in what I hope readers will find to be a fresh and exciting way. If you write a novel set in America during the 1700s, it won't be true to life unless religious faith plays a significant role. Many Americans at this time had deep religious convictions that guided the way they thought and acted. I'm standing in front of St. Thomas Episcopal Church in Bath, North Carolina. It was built in 1734. It's the oldest surviving church building in my home state, and in fact, it's one of the oldest churches in America. When you study the history of frontier settlements across colonial America, from New England and the backcountry of Pennsylvania down to Georgia, the role of faith and religious dissent is impossible to miss. Many of my own ancestors, for example, were originally Anglicans, Puritans, or Dutch Reformed church members who moved west and south. They often became Quakers or Presbyterians along the way, and then they joined Baptist or Methodist churches when they got to the Carolinas. In my novel, many of the characters profess their faith, pray for God's guidance, or give thanks to divine providence for shepherding America past perils and pitfalls. One of the main characters, Peter Muhlenberg, is himself a Lutheran minister. Peter's father, Henry Muhlenberg, was basically the founder of the Lutheran Church in America. In the early 1770s, he sent Peter to the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia to pastor a congregation of German-speaking settlers. In Mountain Folk, I depict Peter Muhlenberg hiking into the wilderness shortly after his arrival, praying for inspiration. He looks up at a mountain, and he recalls the words of the prophet Isaiah, and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge. When this Bible verse comes to mind, Peter interprets that as a sign from God. He resolves to make the mountain and his church a refuge for the faithful. Much later, as an army general, Peter attends a meeting just before the Battle of Yorktown, where George Washington credits divine providence, and the French general Rochambeau credits their own efforts for laying the trap the British are about to step into. Gentlemen, Peter reminds them, if I may quote the book of Proverbs, a man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. We have both divine guidance and human ingenuity to thank for our present position. That's how a minister turned general would talk, isn't it? You can always learn more about my novel by visiting the book's website, which is simply mountainfolkbook.com. While there, you can learn how to order the book. Mountain Folk is scheduled to be released on June 8, 2021. Thanks for watching.